So in Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, Jesus begins as he continues on with this message. It says, you are. Doesn't say the teachers, the preachers, the pastors. He says, you are. Not will be, should be, ought to be. He comes with a statement that says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do the people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, the Bible says. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men. So that men will be, may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. When we see this message of Jesus... We see this message of God, Jehovah, speaking to the multitudes. And this multitude is filled with many different types of people. And in the same way we read that in the Beatitudes, Jesus calls everyone blessed. Here Jesus says... Now, if you are blessed, that also means that you are salt and light. That is a condition to be blessed. Because the reason that you are blessed is because you are distinct. It's because you are not like everyone else. It doesn't matter how you grew up. It doesn't matter the faith that you may have believed when you were young. What matters is that you have come to a knowledge of God. And you have surrendered your life to Jesus. And now that God calls you as one of his own. He says you are the salt. And when we think about salt. We think of many different abilities of salt. But in the days of Jesus. Even Roman soldiers were paid with salt. That means you were worth your price in salt. Even the word salary comes from salt. Because you are worth your salt. The Greeks thought that salt was divine. The Japanese thought in the ancient days that they would throw salt on a theater stage. Because it was to get rid of the evil spirits. Even the famous painting of Da Vinci. Of the 12 disciples seated at the Last Supper. When you see the picture of Judas. And you see that he is knocking salt over. And many people thought that dropping salt was a sign of a bad omen or a bad luck. So we see that people have preconceived notions of salt. In Arab cultures, if you have a meal together with salt between two men, it's to sign a treaty or a deal. Other people throw salt over their shoulder to make a promise. And even the Bible makes... A, a, a reference to a covenant made in salt. Because in 2 Chronicles 13 verse 5. 
Crónicas 13, 5, it says, Don't you know that the Lord, the God of Israel, has given the kingship of Israel to David and his descendants forever by a covenant of salt? Ese versículo habla de un pacto de sal. Therefore, we see that salt is used as part of a legally binding agreement. It's something that holds it together. It's something that adds seasoning. It's more than just a mineral. Salt can help you lower your blood sugar. Salt can help you make your muscles relax. We have so many abilities through salt whether it's to season food to preserve it to disinfect things and even use as a unit of exchange but the thing that makes salt effective especially as a preservative is that it needs to have contact the meat or the fish that is trying to preserve it needs to have contact with it because the fish and the meat is already dead but it's decaying it's decomposing and the only way you can stop this process is by putting salt on it you are and I are dead to our sins. You and I are dead to our transgressions. We know that we're going to check out of this life one day. But in order to prevent and preserve, in order to enjoy life, in order to not become depressed, in order to not become down in our lives, in order not to blame God for everything, Jesus says, You are the salt. You are are the key factor you are that ingredient uh, that helps those that are dying that lifts the hands of those that are fallen uh, you are that word of encouragement uh, you are that text somebody needs to receive uh, you are that call that somebody wants to hear you are that encouragement uh, because God has wants to use you and me more than just the cultural reference uh, more than an exchange of money God wants us to use us to impact souls that wherever we go that even though people may never pick up a Bible even though people may never step into church that they may know God through you they may know God through your experience they may know God through your faith they may know God through your dedication they may know God through your own self obedience it doesn't make you a Christian if you protest things it doesn't make you a Christian if you have a certain political point of view what makes you a Christian is to be able to infiltrate a world of sin and expose them to God it's interesting because God did not call them something that they would be used to judge people with he didn't call them you are the balance of the law he didn't call them you are the bench of the attorney general he called them you are the salt you are accessible you are precious you are a commodity that people need uh, you need to be aware that more than people knowing your story more than people knowing your pain and your affliction people need to know why you are the way you are why you are thankful why you you are blessed. Uh, why do you praise him? Why do you glorify him? Why do you seek him? Why 
Why do you worship him? Oh, let me tell you. He put flavor in my life. Uh, when I was depressed. Uh, when the medication wasn't working. Uh, when the crisis center was closed. Uh, when I was thinking about suicide. Uh, when I didn't think I was going to get out of jail. Salt came in my life. Uh, salt touched me. Salt healed me. Salt set me free. It is through mercy that we saw salt. Uh, it's by making peace that we show salt. Uh, it's by being happy that we show salt. Uh, it's by showing joy that we show salt. Uh, even by even submitting ourselves, we show salt. My wife was just telling me this week. She just started a new job at a new place. And they don't know much about what she knows about computer systems. But her manager had somebody try to train her. And she already knew the system. She already knew how to do things. But she said, okay. Show me. Because she wanted to submit to the order of the manager. Sometimes you have to submit to things that you already know. That you know no need to have explained to you. But by showing submission, you show salt. Salt is that flavor. You need to understand that sometimes... Salt is elegant Sal food that you don't even know it's there. Está la comida, ni sabemos que está la comida. When you barbecue a sausage Cuando in the summer, it tastes so good Tiene un buen sabor. because you might as well be licking a block of salt es sal. because it's got so much sodium in that sausage. Then so much sodium in our food. Hay tanta sal en esas Even comidas. if you go to the sweetest of bakeries, they put salt in the sweet bread because it is a necessary ingredient that even though it is hidden, that even though it's not visible, that even though you may not necessarily taste it, it augments everything else in it. And that's what we need. That's people that will stand on top of a platform and start critiquing people and judging people and telling them that you're not my neighbor because you don't do what I do. You don't worship how I worship. You don't do what I do. But God said, you have to be quiet. Be simple. And just add flavor. That wherever you go, people will say, there's something about you. It's not your clothes. It's not your education. It is not the way you treat people. But there's more something about you that I don't quite understand. You say to them, it's not something about me. It's God in me. It's God in me. Because I can't do this on my own. You know, when we tell somebody that they are salty today, it's not really a good term to call somebody salty. Because you call somebody salty who is sour. Call somebody who is crusty. Somebody who is bitter. That's not the kind of salt that God wants to see. He says, I need you to be a salt that changes. It's interesting because salt is such a small grain on its own. Just one grain of salt is not that effective. And you could say the same thing about one snowflake. But watch a whole bunch of snowflakes come together. And they will shut down a city. They will shut down a street. In the same way when salt comes together. Just one may not be significant. But you put a whole bunch of salt together. They can also shut down a city. From all the things of evil. From all the corruption of the enemy. 
that even though we're not in city hall, God is still God in the church. God is still God in the neighborhood. God is still God in the hearts of our people. And coming together, we can be that thing that makes significance in people's lives. You are a person of impact. That's what Jesus was saying. You are impact. You are distinct. You have influence. You can infiltrate. You can penetrate. You can get mixed up in things and still be salt. You don't have to do what other people do. You don't have to agree with other people agree and that is the main difference that sometimes the gospel doesn't have to be preached the gospel needs to be lived that is the greatest preaching you have to live what you say it's powerful metaphor that Jesus uses comparing us to salt. Because you have to, you have to be able to defend people. You have to be, be able to be mixed with people. And the thing about salt is that salt, we only use about 6% of the salt of the earth. So usamos como el 6% del sal que está en la tierra. That we use it to consume for ourselves. Para consumirnos nosotros mismos. The other 94%. Es usado en plástico. Es usado en papel. Es usado en glass. En vidrio. Es usado en clothing. En esas ropas. Es usado en rubber. En 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 elástico. Es usado en fertilizers. Look at your bleach, it's got sodium. Look at your soap and detergents, they got salt. All types of dyes have salt. Salt is everywhere. Without having it to be announced. That's the way gospel should be. People should have access to God and not even be aware that even though they don't come to church on a Sunday, that at the cubicle next to them, God's mercy is there. God's favor is there. God's love is there. God's faith is there. That they have been infiltrated. Without expecting it, that it can pass any security system, that it can pass through any airport detention center, that you don't have to sneak it into a prison, and you don't have to claim for it in any other way, because God's love is everywhere. God's mercy is for everyone. We all need and use so directly or indirectly. He's saying you have to be salt. But the other part that's very interesting is that the people in those days, whereas Jesus was preaching, knew that there was good salt and bad salt. Because near where Jesus was preaching, there was another sea called the Dead Sea. And in the Dead Sea, it is a sea that has no access. It's got no water coming in and no water going out. But the sodium level is so dense that you can almost throw a rock and it will float to the top of the water. Because there's so much salt in there. But people do not use dead sea salt to consume. Because the chemical is highly polluted. It is a useless 
Salt. No sirve esa sal. That even though it's salt by name, aunque es sal por nombre, it is not salt because it's useful. Pero no sal porque se puede usar. So the times of Jesus, they would use salt from the ocean. Or they would use salt from lakes that they would dry up in the dry season. And then they would go and scrape the salt out of the dry ground. I wonder today if there are people just like the Dead Sea. They are salt by name. They have the properties of salt. But when it comes to being used by God, they are nothing but a title. They are nothing but a deception. They are nothing but a fraud. Because they've been so contaminated by the things of this world that nothing comes in from God and nothing comes out from God. You just absorb everything and think that your opinion is right. That the way you read the Bible is right. That the way you're teaching your children is right. But just like the Dead Sea, nothing can live and nothing can be benefited from them. We have to get away from that mentality that only because I have a Bible, that only because I come to church, I don't need to change. It's everybody else. It is the worship team that's got to change. It's the pastor that's got to change. It's the way they preach that's got to change. I'm here to tell you that if you are salt of God, you have to depend on Him. He gives you your properties. He gives you your abilities. He gives you what you need. They would not use the salt of the Dead Sea. Because the Dead Sea had no flow. It had no movement of water. It had no access to something different. At least the water of the ocean, the waves bring it in, bring it out. And even in the lake water, the lake water would be water that would rain during rainy season. And it would go through a process that as the water evaporated, all that was left is salt. Sometimes we say the devil is having his way with me right now. The devil is causing a problem in my life. Oh, the devil is attacking my husband. The devil wants my husband. You don't even want your husband sometimes. What makes you think the devil wants your husband? Oh, the devil wants my car. The devil doesn't have a driver's license. He doesn't care about your car. Oh, the devils want to take away my job. Last time I checked, the devil doesn't have a sin number. He doesn't want your job. But what he wants is your faith. Because your faith is the salt. Your faith is that flavor. Your faith is that agent. That God wants to use. Sometimes we get it mixed up. The devil doesn't want your finances. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need a job. He wants your faith. He wants what makes you different. He wants to make take away those things that God has set aside. You need to tell the devil, I am the salt. I have faith. I will not be moved. I will not be shaken by your storm. Because I depend on Jehovah. The same God that said let there be light. Has called me to be salt. And you cannot take away my title. You cannot take away my ability. You can take everything else around me. But just like the water. 
it all has to evaporate in order to get to the salt. The thing is that Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. He used a term that everybody would understand. So the next thing that he says is also a term that everybody would understand. But if the salt loses its saltiness. How can salt lose its flavor? <laughs> Have you ever tried to go and get salt from your cupboard? And you go and shake it in the salt shaker. And it's nothing but a big clump of salt. What happened? Nobody else touched it. Nobody else mixed it with anything else. But the salt went to waste Pero la sal se perdió because nobody used it. Porque nadie usó la sal. God wants your faith Dios quiere nuestra fe. that your faith is accessible que sea accesible for other people to be able to use the favor that God has given you so that you can channel it and be used that favor to others. You have to be able to use your faith. You have to be able to defend people who don't know how to defend themselves. You have to be able to stand in the gap for people who don't know any better. You have to be able to reach out to those that nobody cares about. That's what makes you salt. There's nothing more annoying than trying to use something that has no longer any value because it's expired. Whether it be a battery that you want to put on a flashlight, it's expired. You want to go and use the, uh, a voucher, it's expired. You want to use salt and it's expired. When salt has lost its flavor, it is of no use, Jesus was saying. And the word that use, Jesus used is, is here. It says it's lost its flavor. It's lost its taste. It looks like salt. It smells like salt. But it doesn't taste like salt. The Greek word that Jesus uses is moraino. Which means the salt has gone stupid. The salt has become foolish. He says the salt has become insipid or dull. In other words, the word salt has become deficient. Have you ever bought winter salt? And forgot about it in your garage. And then you go back five years later. And you realize, oh my gosh, I did forgot that we had this salt here. You try to use it. And you might as well be using a bowling ball of salt. And when you throw it on the, on the floor, it's not as effective. In other words, the salt has become useless. What made the salt useless is the lack of exposure. You and I need to be exposed to the Word of God. You and I need to be exposed to the truth of God. Otherwise, Jesus says, if you are not exposed, you become foolish. You become foolish in your religion. You become foolish in your own thoughts. You become foolish in your own opinion. You become foolish in your emotions because you are never exposed. You're never exposed to what God can do. You're never exposed to the possibility 
that God can work a miracle. You don't become exposed to the possibility of the amazing thing that God can do through you. You need to say, God, expose me to your truth. Expose me to your wonder. Expose me to your glory. Expose me to your opportunity. When we use salt, it means that it's got wisdom. In other words, if you want to impact this world, you just don't respond to an email when somebody sends you a mean email. Sometimes, in order to be wise, you don't necessarily talk on somebody who cuts you off. I'm going to tell you one thing. There was one day we were really late for church. And we were running so late. And in, it almost seems like every time you're running late, there's somebody going really slow in front of you. Like super slow. You know, I, I hope one day when I retire, that I get up at 7 a.m. every morning and I have nothing to do but drive around because that's how many people frustrate me sometimes I don't know where they're going I don't know what lane they're turning but they take their sweet time well this Sunday I, I, we weren't going to this service we're going to another service and I was ready to lay the horn. I was, oh, Jesus. Oh, God, help me right now, Lord. I was, I was speaking in tongues. And it wasn't good tongues. And I was, Lord, you know I want to go serve you. But this car in front of me is slow. He needs the car of Elijah. He needs to go with chariots of fire, God. And when I finally pulled into the parking lot, it was somebody who else that was going to the same church service that I was yeah, going to. And here I was, in my own mind, thinking of things that I was going to do to that car. That's what happens with us. If we are left to our own opinions, if we are left to our own emotions, we become the wrong kind of salty. We have the wrong tendency. Oh, you put me in the wrong situation. You know, soul can heal. But you put on a slug and it kills it. You put salt on a real wound and it stings. You have to be able to be able to know how to use salt. You have to be able to know when to put the right level of salt. And Jesus was saying, when you become foolish, when you're not exposed to the gospel, when you're not exposed to the impossible of God, he says, you look like salt. You have the properties of salt. But what salt was made for, you don't have it. You lost it. You lost it along the way. You lost the ability to influence. You lost the ability to forgive people. You forgot the ability to get rid of bitterness in your life. Why do you carry all those sentiments and feelings in your heart? Why do you carry all those things that God said He has set you free from? We have lost the quality and we have become dull. There is no taste to us. There is no effectiveness to us. And the Bible says that the people would then take the salt and throw it on the street. It was of no use. It might as well the animals trample on it so that people could walk on it because the salt had lost its flavor. The question then becomes how do I know that it lost my flavor? And I'm glad you asked because Jesus says you are the light of the world. 
If there's no light in you, si no hay luz en nosotros, there's no salt. No hay sal. Because if there's no light, si no hay luz, there's no revelation. No hay revelación. There's no light. Si no hay luz, there's no relationship with God. No hay relación con if Dios. there's no light, si no hay luz, you're not being exposed to God. No sos expuesto and if Dios. you're not exposed to God, no expuesto you lose your flavor. Su sabor. Jesus was relaying Jesus the two because cosas, even though they're very distinct sources, Cosas. One that comes out of the source of the ground being salt, uno que viene de la tierra que sale, and one being light that comes from the heavens, y uno que sur, la luz que viene one del sol, needs exposure through the other uno al otro, in order to be effective. Para ser God is saying to Dios you and me that if we are the light si of the world, if we are a light on a lampstand, then we need to be able to be able to have connection with God. We need to have a relationship with God. We need to be able to shine the light of God. Because the world that we live in, it sure is a dark place. The world that we live in is susceptible to tragedies. Look at all the things that are happening in the world right now. Look at all the people that have died in Africa through that cyclone. People have lost their power. They lost their homes. They have lost lives. You see people hanging on trees for their lives. Because there is no access to services. Roads have been washed away. And all this tragedy that has happened. All these things around us. Things that are so dark. People filled with pain. People carrying sorrow. People are hurt with, through addictions. People are hurt through things that they are living through. Through rejection. Through unemployment. Through a, pro, uh, through a physical issue. Maybe it's a financial burden. People are hurting in this world. And the thing about darkness is that darkness isolates you. Because there's a separation between light and dark. When you buy a light bulb, you don't buy a light bulb with 80 kilowatts of darkness. You don't buy a light bulb with 120 kilowatts of darkness. Because darkness cannot be measured. Darkness is the absence of light. Because light is the only one that can be measured. So in order for darkness to stop, there needs to be an invasion of light. There needs to be an exposure to light. The more you increase the light, the less shadows there are. The less darkness there is. You are what God wants to use to expose what is hurting to expose what is unjust to expose what is unfair to expose what is hurting in other people that others may not look like you that others may not worship the same God that you do but you know a tragedy when you see it you know an injustice when you see it you know that something is wrong when you see it, because it's the power of the light that's inside of you. It is God shining. It is His glory. It is the Shekinah that moves inside you that will not let you rest. That is the world that we're called to be part of. To shine. 
light in the darkness. Doesn't matter what you call that darkness. Whether it be child abuse, shine a light. Whether it be uh, financial issues, shine a light. Where is a lack of service for a new Canadian? Shine a light. You need to be able to shine a light. And let's say, Lord, let your glory fall. Let you do what you need to do. And use me as a vessel. Use me as you want me. You know, 20 years ago, we used to sing a song. We used to sing, Change my heart, oh God. And now it seems like we now say, Lord, I need you to change your heart. It's not you changing my heart. I need you to change your heart, God. I need you to change your mind. I need you to change your decision about what you're doing in my life. And we got things wrong. Whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, I need way more of God than God needs me. He doesn't need me. He has got no use of me. But because He loves me, it's because He loves you that He's still with you. It's because He loves you is that He's still with you. And therefore, he says, I need you to be a light. I don't need you to do good works. I don't care who, what you do, but I need you to be my light. I need you to be humble and submit. I need you to be show mercy where nobody's showing mercy. I need you to bring peace in places where there's destruction and war. I need you to bring joy where there's oppression and depression. What makes light and salt similar is that they've got their own distinct abilities to influence. One to shine light in the darkness and the other to add flavor in light. God says you are a double threat to the enemy because you're not here just to add flavor to the issue but you got the light of God shining through you you have a double ability you have a double anointing to walk in the supernatural of God that you are in this world but not of this world so when you begin to doubt yourself when you begin to step out of into a world of complacency when you start being exposed to things that smell like darkness when you feel temptation is at the door when you feel that addictions are coming back when you feel those things that you thought you got rid of are still chasing you in your darkest hour in your greatest moment of need uh, you have no one else but God uh, and he calls you you are the salt uh, you are the light uh, you are my child you are blessed because you are distinct not because you come from a celestial body not because you come out of this earth but because I breathe life into you that's what makes you distinct that everything that has breath praise the Lord praise him in his temple praise him in his holy place Praise Him for His mercy. Praise Him for His goodness. Praise Him for His salvation. Praise Him for His healing. Praise Him for His deliverance. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. For He is here. And He is worthy of our praise. When you preserve meat, you just can't put salt on it for an hour. You can't put salt on it just for half a day. Or a day or two. 
That thing has been to be coated with salt through the whole duration. And if that's what makes it the difference. In other words, there needs to be an agreement between the salt and what it's trying to preserve. There has to be a covenant. There has to be a relationship. We have gone into the idea that in the same way you can order something online through Amazon or Walmart and it shows up in your front door two days later, we want God to enter in that same way. But God says, I need you to have a relationship. There needs to be a covenant. That if I'm going to cover what is decaying, that if I'm going to cover what is decomposing, I need to cover you from head to toe. Sometimes we say, Lord, cover me with your oil. But today we need to say, cover me with your salt, God. Remove all the impurities. Remove all that is in me. Remove the polluted salt in my heart. Remove what smells like the Dead Sea. Remove what has become foolish in me. Because I don't want to be like that no more. Today I'm wondering. Has that light gone off? Si la luz ha ascendido, has the light been turned off in your life? O si la luz se ha apagado en su vida. Sometimes when you drive late at night, a veces cuando uno maneja bien por la noche, and you come down the 401 and you're on your way to home, y uno viene por la carretera del 401 y uno viene ya camino a casa, I can always tell how close I am home late at night, not necessarily by the signs on the side of the road, but because I can see the light shining in the cities that I'm passing by. I can say, oh, I see Chatham right there. Oh, I can see the lights of Leamington over there. And I can see the light of Detroit right in front of me. Sometimes people don't have access to signs in front of them to know that there is danger, but they can recognize light in the darkness. Mm -hmm. You are that city on a hill. You are where God has put you. But how useful is a lighthouse if the light is not shining? ¿Para qué sirve la luz si no va a brillar en la oscuridad? Especialmente cuando están pasando los barcos. Necesitan ver la luz brillar. Pero si la luz no brilla, todos los barcos están en un, en un lugar donde pueden ser destruidos. You are a shining light. That you don't know the people that are passing by you. You don't know the people that will come in contact with you. But I need to know that the light of God is still shining. In this world where people are dark on the outside as they are dark on the inside. In a world that people are losing hope in governments. People are losing hope even in famous artists that they once worshipped and followed. We need to have the light of God shine. Heaven and earth will pass. Cielo y tierra pasarán, más mi palabra no pasará, dice la palabra de Dios. Dios quiere brillar en tu vida. No quiere brillar en tu vida solo para que tu vida sea más llena de luz. Es para aquellos que no tienen luz que puedan ver. Gracias, Señor. You are, is what God says. The I am who I am, who answered Moses, is here to descend a decree to end all your doubt that you are. I don't know if I can do it. Let me tell you, God says, you are qualified. You are distinct. You are employable. You are loved. You are a difference maker. You are 
want to stand up for injustice. You are the salt. You are the light of God. You are his child. You are his beloved. He doesn't say you will be. Only those that go to Bible college. He says you are salt on the earth. Tú eres. No serás. Tal vez mañana. Son los que van a la escuela bíblica. O al colegio bíblico. Dice tú eres simplemente simplemente no compliques la cosa tú don't complicate things you are with heads bowed and our arms raised Lord I am I am I'm no longer going to doubt I'm no longer going to hide it I am who you call me to be I am a mother to these children I am a husband to my wife. I am a believer in spirit and truth. I am changed. I am healed. I am a new creation. I am who you call me to be, oh God, and I thank you. I thank you because I don't have to doubt anymore. I am who you called me. Remove anything that's been foolish in my heart. Anything that's been foolish in my mind. Anything that's been foolish in my mouth and in my ears. Remove it, God. I don't need to be exposed to social media. I don't need to be exposed to the news. I don't need to be exposed to injustice. I need to be exposed to God who will show me where I need to go. Expose me to your glory. Let your glory shine down on me. Yes, sir. Oh, I need you, oh God, in my life. More than I ever have. Because just like other people are lost in darkness, I get lost in my own thoughts. I get lost in how I'm going to provide for my children. I get lost in how I'm going to be able to pay the finances of the home. I get lost about my own pain and affliction on my decaying body. I get lost in all the worries. I get lost and become afraid when people start breaking into the neighbor's houses. But I need you, God. I need you in this moment of my need. Shine. Shine on me, Jesus, again. Shine, Jesus, shine. And remove all my doubt. Remove my foolishness, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to say this to you. The instructions that Moses received when God spoke to him he prepared the tabernacle, the altar for sacrifice. Ellos tiraban siete veces sal sobre el altar. They would throw salt seven times on the altar. Eso es símbolo de santificar el lugar de donde sale It's la palabra. It's symbol de to sanctify where the word of God is be spoken. Es símbolo también de que el sumo sacerdote no tenía que oler a corrupción a carne de carne. The sign of the high priest did not need to smell of corruption of earth sino que tenía que ser un hombre íntegro be a man that was in full of integrity también esta sal also the salt cuando la tiraba el sumo sacerdote sobre el pueblo as the high priest would sprinkle it over the people le estaba demostrando ustedes son familia real was showing them you are part of a royal family y si somos parte de una familia real and if we're part of a royal family tenemos autoridad y poder sobre el diablo we have power and authority to the devil and his and the enemy y si yo tengo esa sal aquí and if I have that salt here pueden danzar 20, 30 brujos 20, 30 witch doctors can come in this place y pueden quererme maldecir they want to curse me y ninguna maldición and no curse will have any effect porque tener la sal de Dios en nosotros because having the salt of God in us es tener la armadura de Dios is having the armor of God es tener la presencia de Dios is having the presence of God porque la sal también because salt 
es símbolo del Espíritu Santo. Is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Quiero decirle algo más, hermano. Furthermore, I want to say this. Cuando se le tiraba la sal a la Israel, when salt was sprinkled on the people of Israel, porque se usaba como moneda la sal, because salt was used as a form of money exchange. Dios le estaba diciendo a Israel, he was saying to the people of God, yo te voy a bendecir financieramente todo el tiempo. Financially, I will supply all of your needs. Te voy a proveer de acuerdo de mis riquezas en gloria. I am God, the provider, the provider is according to my riches. Y era Dios diciéndole al pueblo ahora, la iglesia. God said to the church today. Cuando Jesús le dijo, ustedes son la sal. When Jesus said, you are the salt. Donde quiera que usted y yo vayamos. And wherever you and I go. En el nombre del Señor Jesús. In the name of Jesus. Los demonios tienen que irse. Demons gotta go. Porque llevamos esa luz, esa sal. Because we carry the light, we carry that salt. Yo estaba leyendo un testimonio. I was reading a testimony. De un pastor en el África. Of a pastor in Africa. Se levantaron muchos brujos. Many witch doctors came against them. Y todos hacían sacrificios de animales. And they were all making kind of animal sacrifices around him. Y cada uno quería matarlo. And each one of them wanted to kill him. ¿Y sabe qué pasó? And you know what happened? Todos los brujos murieron. All the witch doctors died. Ninguno prosperó. None was successful in their. En las armas del infierno que usaban. In the weapons of hell they were trying to use. Porque dice la palabra de Dios. The Bible says. Que ningún arma Forjada no weapon forged against you shall prosper. Va a prosperar. <laughs> Hermano. Brothers and sisters. Necesitamos esa sal en nuestra mente. We need that salt in our mind. Para que Dios preserve nuestra mente de pensamientos de preserve our mind from all these evil thoughts. Necesitamos la sal en el corazón. We need that salt in our hearts. Para que no haya odio aquí. So there's no hatred, no bitterness. Sino que podamos amarnos a los unos a los otros. able to love one another. Necesitamos esa sal en nuestros pies. We need that salt on our feet. Para que nuestro caminar. So that our walk. Sea un caminar de guerreros espirituales. Be a walk of a spiritual warrior. Derribando posiciones. Bringing down opposition. Que se levante contra nosotros. En el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. Necesitamos la sal en la boca. Para que lo que atemos en la tierra sea atado en los cielos. Y que lo que desatemos de los cielos sea desatado en la tierra. Necesitamos esa sal en nuestros ojos. ¿Sabe qué me mostraba el Señor? Se recuerda esa parte de un ciego. The part of the blind man. Que cuando el Señor le tocó, that when Jesus touched his eyes, he said, "What do you see?" He said, "What do you see?" He said, "I see men walking like trees." He said, "I see men walking like trees." O sea, que era un ciego que había visto anteriormente. He was a blind man that had seen, so he had a term of reference. Miraba a la gente como árboles. He saw the people as trees. ¿Cómo mira usted a su hermano? How do you see your neighbor? Si usted no lo mira como una creación perfecta de parte de Dios, si usted lo mira como un problema, usted necesita sal en sus ojos. Si usted no puede ver a alguien bendecido, usted necesita sal en los ojos. Si yo no miro a Cristo como Rey de Reyes y Señor de Señores, necesito sal en mis ojos. Si yo no miro que esa cruz está vacía, que él venció al diablo de la muerte, todo pecado y transgresión, en la cruz del Calvario, yo necesito sal en mis ojos. Si yo miro y digo que la iglesia está débil, necesito sal, porque la iglesia nunca está débil. Puedo yo estar débil, pero Jesús nunca ha perdido la fuerza, nunca ha perdido el poder, nunca ha perdido la autoridad. Y este día, yo voy a orar por usted. Si usted siente que está perdiendo esa sal, 
Sabe que sale símbolo de misericordia. Salt is a symbol of mercy. Símbolo de fe. Symbol of faith. Símbolo del amor de Dios. Symbol of the love of God. Símbolo de la esperanza. Symbol of hope. Símbolo de humildad. Symbol of humility. O sea que la sal cubre muchas cosas. Salt covers many things. Si usted necesita algo ahora, but if you need something today, no se vaya. Don't leave here without being covered. Recibalo hoy de parte Receive de Dios. Receive it from God. Yo voy a orar por usted. I want to pray for you. Para que él derrame sal espiritual so sobre salt, su vida. Spiritual salt will fall upon you. Mira usted que todo está mal. Is everything gone wrong? Se siente derrotado. Do you feel defeated? Te necesita de esa sal espiritual. You need that spiritual salt today. Sabe que me mostraba el Señor. You know like I was showing you. Los egipcios supieron cómo usar la sal para preservar los cadáveres que hoy se conoce como momias. The Egyptians knew how to use salt to preserve the mummies. Ellos decían, de, entre más sal se prepara, se prepara en el cuerpo, the más va a durar. The more salt, the more the body will last. El cuerpo no va a conocer corrupción muy rápido. The body will not know corruption as it progresses to the next level. ¿Sabe de qué me hablaba el Señor? You know what God was showing me? Si tenemos esa sal. If you have that salt. Palabra de Dios, fuego del Espíritu Santo. Fire of God, word of God. Dios nos va a preservar de la corrupción. God will preserve us from the corruption of this world. Usted y yo vamos a aprender a caminar en santidad. You and I will be able to walk in holiness. Usted y yo vamos a poder, hermano, apartarnos del mundo. To get away from this world. Y servirle a Dios como él lo merece. Serve God like he deserves it. La oportunidad está aquí. The opportunity is here. Yo voy a orar por el que siente la necesidad de oración. I want to pray for those that need the need of prayer.